Hello, my name is Victoria Jamison. I'm an author and illustrator. I make graphic novels. Some of my graphic novels include Roller Girl and All's Fair in Middle School. And my newest book comes out next month. It's called When Stars Are Scattered, co-written with Omar Mohammed. So check that out, April 14th. What I wanted to do today is share with you some of my tips for making graphic novels. I love making comics and graphic novels because I think it's a really good way to tell a story. I love using words and pictures together. And we're living in historic times. And maybe you want to write a story about what it's like to live through these times. I think it'd be really interesting for future generations to see what it's like to go to school. Um, what does it feel like to be cooped up with your family all day? I bet you have some very interesting stories to tell. And even if you don't want to write a true story, maybe you want to write a comedy or a fantasy or a science fiction story. I think all kinds of stories are really important right now. So I hope the tips I will give you today will help you to write your story if you want to make a comic or a graphic novel yourself. So the good news is you don't need a bunch of equipment to make a graphic novel. All you really need is some paper, a pen or a pencil or a marker. Uh, so we're going to do some drawing together if you want to pause the video and get some paper. Um, because I, what I love about being a graphic novelist is I think I'm sort of, I like to think of myself like a movie director because I write the script, I cast the characters, and I also do things like costume design and set design. I get to create this whole world, like an entire movie, but all you need is paper. So um, one way that you can easily make a book, if you don't have any extra notebooks or sketchbooks lying around, I like to go look through my printer or in shelves around the house and see if I can find some paper. I found this 11 by 17 paper, which is perfect because then you can fold it in half and voila, you got yourself a little book. Easy peasy. So I want to show you how I do some of my drawings. Um, maybe some tips on how to draw expressions and draw panels so that you can tell whatever story you want to tell through comics. So one of the first things I like to focus on when I'm making a comic, one of my most important jobs as an illustrator is to draw characters feeling things. How do you draw a character feeling angry or happy or scared or nervous or hungry. These are all expressions you need to show as an illustrator. So the first thing I want to show you is how to draw two different expressions. The way I usually start when I'm drawing a character's face, a simple way, is to write the letter U. So that's kind of a basic face shape. I like to think of it like a Mr. Potato Head doll that you can then add eyes and nose and mouth on to make it look like your person. So if I want to make someone looking angry, how do you do that? One thing you can do is you can go to a mirror and make an angry face and you can draw what you see. So if I'm making an angry face, it looks something like this. <laughs> so my eyebrows are going down. That's kind of the first thing I notice when I look at an angry face. You got some eyebrow action. Um, when I get really angry, I like to get this laser focus in my eye. That's when my kid knows he's in trouble. There's a scene in Roller Girl where she has to make a war face. And that's basically just the angriest face she can muster. So in that scene, I had some blood vessels breaking in her eyes to really show she was angry. I try and think about each feature in my face. My nose gets kind of wrinkled up when I make a very angry face. So maybe your character has a wrinkled nose. Is your character clenching their teeth? Or are they yelling because they're so angry? I really try and think about how angry is my character and how can I show what they're feeling. So my comics are pretty realistic, um, but if yours is maybe a little more fantastical, maybe you have some smoke coming out of your character's ears, maybe your character's hair is standing up on their head because they're so angry. Sometimes I'll even 
scribble in the background to show that they're angry. So there's an angry face. I often will start with the drawings, but you also have words in a comic or a graphic novel. So you can use your words to show why your character is angry. You don't necessarily need to write, this person's angry, because if you've done your job, you can see that they're angry. But you can write things we don't see, like, why is your character angry? go outside. Okay, so there's angry. Let's try a second expression. Let's try nervous. How do you show someone being nervous? So I start again with the letter U. That's kind of how I start all of my characters. And a more subtle expression like nervous might be more difficult to capture. So if I'm feeling nervous, my eyebrows, instead of going down, kind of go up in a in an odd way. So that also could be kind of sad looking. So let's work on the eyes. When I'm nervous, maybe I'm looking off to the side. Maybe I'm doing a sort of half mm, nervous kind of face. So one of the things I like about comics is that you can write why they're angry or why they're nervous, but you can also play around with it. Maybe your picture could say one thing and your character is saying something else. This is one of my favorite things about comics because I think it could be really, it could be a really interesting way to tell a story because maybe you're reading one thing in the pictures and you're reading something else in the words and you need to decide, well, which one is true. So that's something you can play around with with your own comics. Okay, we're going to move on to the next drawing. So how do you make a cartoon that looks like somebody. Let's say you want to make a cartoon about yourself and your best friend. How do you make it look like them? So that's what we'll do now. So I'll get a new sheet of paper. I'll also get a new marker because I think this one's running out. So with all of my characters, I start with really simple shapes and then you can personalize it to make it look like the person you want to draw. So with any person, I start with the letter U as a head, and then I move on to the rest of the body. You can do two lines for a neck. For the torso, I also use the letter U, but I make it an upside down letter U. And this is something you can personalize. Maybe your person's really tall or short. You can make it bigger or smaller, depending on who you're trying to draw and what they look like. The next steps are very um, advanced technique. I call it the stick figure. So I'll draw two legs and two arms. So right now that doesn't really look like anybody. If I wanted to make it look like myself, for example, I could draw two eyes. Noses you can make longer or shorter or bigger or smaller, depending on who it is. Smiling, hello. Let's see, today I've got my hair in braids because maybe you've noticed staying at home, you don't need to make your hair look nice. It's one of the benefits of staying at home all the time. Let's see, I've got a striped shirt on today. And these stick figure arms, I can now make more three-dimensional. So I just add another line, more stripes. Fingers, a lot of people tell me they have a hard time drawing hands, so I'm gonna show you my secret trick for drawing hands. 
This is the mitten method. You draw a mitten, and then you draw some fingers inside the mitten. So I'll do the same on the other side. Oops, I forgot to do the mitten method. And for pants, guess what? I'm wearing pajama pants. Again, one of the joys of working from home. Business on top, pajamas on the bottom. So try this with your friends or your neighbors or your family and see if you can make cartoon characters of what they look like. Okay, so the next thing we're going to draw, we've drawn a hill person standing up, but how do you draw someone doing something? This can be a tricky part. Um, it's easy maybe to draw someone standing stationary, but how do you show someone riding a bicycle or running down the street? So I'm going to show you how to draw someone walking across the room and tripping over a Lego, because I did that this morning. So get a new sheet of paper. How to draw someone doing something. I'll turn this one sideways. So the first thing I want to do is think about what my person would look like if they're falling over. I'm going to start with the letter U. I'm going to have it sort of tilted because they're about to fall on their face. Once again, I use the advanced technique called stick figures. So I'm going to draw a stick figure of someone about to fall on their face. Maybe they've got one leg on the ground, one leg up in the air, and maybe their arms are kind of flailing around in the air. So that's where you can start. One of the first things I think of is how does my character feel at this moment? No matter what I'm drawing, I think of how they're feeling. So when I'm tripping, I usually feel a few things at once. I feel embarrassed and scared, maybe angry at my son for leaving a Lego on the floor, but I'll keep it too kind of shocked that you're falling over. So I'll draw some big eyes. Maybe I'm yelling ah, because I'm about to fall over. And that's how I start. So once again, I take this stick figure and then I sort of add the meat and meat on top of the bones. I think of this stick figure like a skeleton that you can then add muscles and skin on top of. So I don't usually work in Sharpie, but you can erase the skeleton underneath once you have your body on top. You can also make a comic just using stick figures. That's totally fine. If you've read Diary of a Wimpy Kid, those are some of my favorite books. They're so funny and they're mostly stick figures. So you can definitely write a whole story using stick figures. But for my books, I'd like them to be a little more realistic. So I usually add some more to it. So I try and use things like shoelaces to show someone's moving. Maybe the hair of your character can show that they're falling over. And then you can go in and add the arms. Here's the mitten method again. And backgrounds can also be tricky, but you don't need to be too intimidated by them. A background can be as simple as a line. And then here's that Lego that I was tripping over. Voila. So a few more tips that you can use for comics. Um, I've shown you how to draw some characters. If you want to tell a whole story, comic artists often use something called panels. So if I've got a page like this, I can then split it into panels to help me tell my story. So one way I often start, especially if you're telling a shorter story or if you're not sure how to tell your story, a good place to start might be three panels. And you can have one for the beginning of your story, the middle of your story, and the end of your story. This may sound pretty basic, but even when I write my really long books, 
I try and keep in mind what's the beginning of my story, what's the middle, and what's the end, and I make sure each part is really clear and satisfying. So you've got your panels and you've got your drawings. What else can you use to tell your story? You can use speech bubbles. That's how you can have your characters talk to one another. You can have thought bubbles. Your character is thinking something. Sometimes I'll change the shape of my speech bubbles to fit how my character is feeling. If my character is angry and yelling, sometimes the speech bubble will be kind of an angry burst. Or if they're sad, maybe it's kind of drippy or looks like a rain cloud. So play around with these shapes. Um, maybe you can be more expressive with the shapes that you use. Another thing I use is text boxes. Um, and that's when you can just kind of set the scene and, you know, say like back in second grade or for my birthday or... in my living room, dot, dot, dot. And then I wanna show you one more thing in terms of telling a story and keeping it visually interesting. So once you've got your panels and you're ready to tell your story, this is something I try and keep in mind. I want to keep my story as visually interesting as possible. And for me, that means, I think it could be easy to tell your story with one person the same size over and over and over again. But I try to think of my, my pen as kind of a movie camera. So sometimes I want to zoom in for a close up or sometimes I want to pull way back to show a scene. So if you see that your panels are looking kind of the same with the same size people over and over again, try and shake it up a bit. So maybe you start with someone that size. Hello. But maybe the next scene, you're kind of like a drone and you go way out and you see a house from far away. You could also zoom close up into your character. I like to do this when my character is feeling something very strongly like if they're really angry or surprised. So then you can zoom way up close on their face. You could even, sometimes you don't need to show all of your character. Let's pretend this one's not here. Let's say you want to talk about how often you're washing your hands. You could just show the hands of your character or the feet or the tail of your dog or your cat. So try showing just a part of your character. Hands, eyes, or zooming out. So I hope these tips have been helpful for you. I hope that it will inspire you to make some of your own comics or graphic novels. And I hope that you'll share your stories with your family or with your friends and teachers, anyone around you really, because I think now more than ever, the world needs to hear your stories. So thank you for spending this time with me and see you soon.